fun. It was a lot of fun. Are we back? The team's going to be picked up late, so I apologize for that. But well, I believe we are back live. Joe working the technical magic here has uh, enabled us to be able to get a signal. And so I apologize for those of you who uh, weren't able to kind of hear our pregame and ready to get us going here, but we do have a feed. We are ready to go. And so with that, again, I'm Joshua Alexander. Joining me as always is Patrick Isley here who's bringing the stats as we are 14.51 left here in the first period and joining a little bit late. With that uh, good national anthem went tonight, we got two evenly matched up teams here as well, Patrick, with the uh, Shakopee Sabres coming into town wearing those black uniforms with uh, white and red trim and your Egan Wildcats wearing their, their home grays with blue and green and white. Yeah, I gotta believe that uh, Egan's feeling pretty good tonight. This is their one conference win, so they have beaten this team earlier in the season, so should be feeling pretty good about themselves coming into this game. Yep, absolutely. And we say evenly matched. The, these girls, they play a tough schedule anyway. Yep. They play some really strong teams, um, and again, both teams kind of young as you look at the roster for uh, Shakopee. A lot of eighth graders, a lot of ninth graders. Their starting goalie is an eighth grader, although she's had two shutouts this season. Right. That's a lot to ask for an eighth grade girl, uh, not in high school yet, and yep. she's she's doing what she can. Playing this kind of schedule, all the practices yep. plus schoolwork, and yep. it, that's for any of them, but especially someone a little bit on the younger yep. side. Absolutely. And then you've got Egan with 14 underclass girls here um, for this year. And again, the younger you are, those are those are tough to be able to mature, understand the speed of the game. You know, is your body fully developed yet, muscle-wise, speed-wise, uh, skill-wise? And so, again, you're dealing with two very young teams here that we expect to, you know, have good maturity over the next couple of years and mm -hmm. just strengthen their programs. Well, a lot of these young girls are getting a lot of ice time in those last few games. We've noticed um, that's only going to that's only going to prepare them that much more for next year. You're only losing two seniors, so uh, you know you, you hope to see a step up come next season. Absolutely. Now Egan comes in here with 4-19-0. Uh, they did lose a tough one to Farmington um, earlier in the week, a 3-1. And uh, they're hoping to vindicate themselves this evening here by pulling off a win against Shakopee. And uh, again, season starts over for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after I think they play one more game against Apple Valley here this weekend. The season starts over. You hit your, your playoffs. Yep. Stranger things have happened. Teams can make a, a deep run into playoffs where underestimated and, and teams look past them and you know there's some very weird stuff that happens in, in hockey in general or you know, that's why you play the game that's why you play the game I mean everything's you don't play it on paper you play it out here and if a team doesn't show up and you do anything can happen uh, I was talking before the game actually and I think I want to say it was oh Eastridge a few years ago against the Eakin girls uh, they were going up against each other uh, to go to for the right to go to state um, and they gave them a heck of a match. I remember being, I believe it was a one-goal game, and they, they were a defensive team. Uh, didn't score a lot of points, but they played some really tight defense and nearly pulled off a serious upset, for. A, and they were a seven-win team. So this, this team is not that far off from that. You wouldn't remember that game because your daughter played defense, did you? No. Okay, just No, checking. that was before her time. Oh, no. gotcha. okay. No. Just checking. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I remember certain games because... My daughter played certain. Oh yeah, yeah. Too, I remember certain so. games too. Yes, no. That she was. Uh, that was a couple, couple of years before her time. Gotcha. Now Shakopee comes in with a overall record of six, sixteen and zero. Um, and uh, again, they just lost their last game. Oh, excuse me. They, they. No, that's not right. Hmm. Did they win that game? They won that game. They yeah. won that game. Yeah, that's so a, that's I, a, that's I a see w. lost game, but La that's a no, last no, game. See, that's, that's left-handed, okay. no, sloppy hand. That's You're okay. Yeah, that's so. the last game. My apologies. I should type things. But, but the Sabres <laughs> did win their last game 6 nothing against Fort Francis, Ontario, who uh, that that's a game you don't normally see no. in the Twin Cities of Fort Francis being able to, to play. That's not a team. That's not a, a name I've written down before. So. No, 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 no. So now as we look out tonight, we've got some leading scorers for Egan. Uh, Hoopmaker's kind of been leading the team all year with points. Mm -hmm. 11 goals, 6 assists, and 17 overall points for the year. Um, Lily Anderson, number 7, defensive senior captain. Uh, she has 7 goals, 9 assists for 16 on the year for her overall points. And then Barry coming in Ooh. as an underclassman. 4 goals, 7 assists for 11 points overall. And again, she's going to be a kiddo to watch here in the next mm -hmm. couple of years. She gets a lot of minutes. Uh, just a scrappy kiddo. 
uh, never gives up, and so it'll be interesting to see her. Now, looking on the Shakopee side, uh, number 27, uh, Grabanowski, Hannah Grabanowski, she's the junior forward, and she comes in with six goals, 13 assists for 19 points overall. And uh, number three, Allison Parker for them, she is a captain, she's a senior forward, and she comes in with six goals, 12 assists for 18 points overall. And then you're looking at uh, number 23 for them, Callie Peterson, junior defense, three goals, 10 assists, and 13 points overall. Um, but with um, looking at Shakopee, not every kiddo on the Shakopee Sabres has a goal, so they kind of mm. lean on a few girls more than others. Um, but these two teams could not be more evenly matched for the uh, last game of the season here at home uh, for Egan. We're talking records are similar, mm -hmm. who's scoring is very similar, and how you're looking at the overall points. Goalies. Two shutouts each. Two shutouts Don't each, see exactly. That often. Penalty wise, you're looking at uh, very evenly matched, even though. Egan's got 11 more penalties uh, than Shakopee, but they're, they're both, though, double digits. 93 penalties on the season for Egan and 82 for the Shakopee Sabres. Mm -hmm. 9.30 left here to play in the first period. Evenly back and forth here tonight. Five shots on net for Shakopee, one for your Egan Wildcats. And Lily Anderson, that senior captain, she's taken this one out and into the offensive zone. Playing tough along the near side. Barry, number eight, is going to give chase here. As along, this heads to the far side. Kept in by number 14 for Egan. That's Reagan Robbins. Hello to her grandparents who are watching at home. <laughs> Lois and Harry. Nice to uh, have seen you guys earlier this season. Got a penalty coming up here on Shakopee. I think number seven. Um, that was kind of away from the puck, a little mm -hmm. bit late. We got a, a hook. hook. Yep. The hook. <laughs> Game of the hook. 8.53 left to play. Two minutes for number seven for Shakopee. That is uh, Brecklin Satrum. She is a uh, senior captain there for them. Plays forward. So we'll line up in the uh, Shakopee zone here. Natalie Hoopmaker is going to take this one. Number 12 for Egan. And they're going to do a little setup here. Barry's going to give this one. Back to Murray, a little give and go action here as he try to set up. Murray's gonna skip this one down. Little saucer pass back there to Hootmaker. Hootmaker, trying to stick handle behind the net. Trying to just set this one up. Nice look over to Robbins. Oh, just gets picked off by Shakopee. Murray gets a backhand on this one. Gives it over to Barry. Murray's looking, looking. Good patience from Egan. All the way over to Robbins. Anderson, nice little dipsy do, kind of getting in there. Can't get all the way through traffic. Oh, that nearly kept that in. Yeah, they nearly kept that one in off the of skates. That's exactly right, Patrick. Nice patience from Egan. We've not seen Egan be so patient on a power play before. Robbins, a lot of time and space. Oh, this one's going to get up, but nope, nope, doesn't quite get out of there. A little physical play there. This one's going to come all the way around to the near side. Pinching in is Olsen. Can't quite get there in time. And Shakopee's happy to saucer pass this one all the way down. Pogacnik, number 23 for Egan. She's going to pick this one up. She's got a little time and space, but getting pinched out with that angle by Shakopee. But coming right behind her is Hayden Olsen. Olsen loses the puck. Oh, we're going to get a penalty on that one. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> For those of you at home, rarely do you get a bench uh, minor, but it usually it has to touch the girl, and the other girl hasn't gone off yet. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Number number 24 for Egan was just getting on the line switch, tap the ground a little bit early, and that puck hit her, and the girl she was going on for hadn't quite gotten off the ice yet. So, yeah, that's uh, too many girls on the ice. Yeah, evens up for 40 seconds. Yeah. We're going to have a face-off here to the right side of Bronwell. Taking that one was Olsen. Coming away with it is Murray. Murray's gonna flip this one in. It's gonna be an icing. Murray wasn't able to take that extra step over the red line. Chucked it in, bringing this back quickly. Four on four hockey for 31 seconds here. He'll open up the ice here a little bit. Out there we've got Olsen, Wedward, Pogacnik, and Murray. 
I think Egan is, Egan's kind of playing like they're on the penalty kill, even though it's a four-on-four mm -hmm. four hockey, but they're setting up in the box and already acting like they're a girl down. Kind of playing back. Yeah, not a little bit. They're playing on their heels a little bit, and yep. I think coach is yelling at him. It's saying even, even. Right. So quick shot that's nope, blocked block. by Pogacnik. Sabres go back to five. Bring it in is Murray. Well done by her. Kind of puts the brakes on. Eating up some clock. Wedward's there. She's looking. Going to play this one back. Get a quick shot. Oh, nice oh. little tip in there. And that's put to the side there by eighth grade goalie Liv Totsik. Putting this one in is, is Barry. She's going to give chase on that. Oh, that one's going to be... Nope, nope. Nope, they didn't. You, I saw numbers, so I, I wasn't quite say, sure. That was right between the numbers, yeah. Yep. A little surprising there. Robbins just got a good shot off. Went wide and high. 35 seconds left to go on that bench minor. Shock be finally able to get this out of their own zone. Carry in, and they're going to dump that puck. Rims all the way behind. Bronwell's net. Over the far side corner. Shockby's looking to set up. Egan's playing a tight box there down low, protecting the house. Shockby's set up back to the blue line. Looking, looking, looking. Hit shot there. Oh, that one just Ooh. goes off of Anderson. She took that one in the bread basket. Ooh. More than happy to get this one all the way down. Two seconds, one. We are back to five on five action, equal play. Shockby has a drive lane that could come all the way through. And that, again, Able to just get a stick on that one is Hootmaker. Liking what I'm seeing tonight. Egan's picking up those sticks, mm -hmm. clearing the lane. Skating out with his Wedward. Loses the handle on it. She tries to dump it in. Shakopee's going to come back the other direction. Number seven, Brecklin Saddam, senior captain. Lost the handle, and this comes all the way back down into the Shakopee zone. Getting a full head of steam there is number five for Shockaby. Taking her end to end. Finally a little bit of backhand action there by Murray. Kicks that puck out over the far side corner. A little bit too much there as uh, Granis was just happy to get it away. Getting some fresh legs out there for Egan. A lot of dump and chase between these two teams. 432 remaining in the first period. Again, dump and chase in for... Shakopee is they're going to go off on a couple girl line change. Just pops this one out. It's going to come all the way back down. Yep, Sarah Cron wants that one back. A little, mm -hmm. a little frustrated there, bagging her stick. I got it. You know, she wanted that one to be able to take it up and just a little bit too far there. Going to bring this one back face off to the right side of Bronwell. We'll change of personnel on both sides. Stripes is ready. We'll get a little puck drop. Hayden Olson moving to center here tonight from defense. Wins that faceoff back to the near side corner. Pogacnik pokes this one up. Gets this one up to Greta Berg. Berg tries to get this one over. But Shakopee has other plans and takes that puck and moves it around. This is going to skitter over the blue line. Shockby's got to reset up. All black sweaters touch up. So we have a little offside action there to start. Anderson cycling around, kind of looking for a, a lane to follow here. Kind of runs out of a little bit of real estate, finds her niche. She's looking. Oh, and that one goes off a skate hard for one of the defense for Shockby. And Shockby's coming back the other way. Finding the line. Tries to dump this one in, can't get there. 3.23 left to play here in the first period. That one deflects off of Anderson. Anderson's just throwing her body around like a rag doll tonight. She is everywhere. Giving it her all for the fans, for her family, on the last home game say, here. Last, played last the time on this ice, yeah. Giving a look there's Barry. Or excuse me, that's Robbins, number 14. Kind of Played it forward, trying to get her own pass. Just trying to get it deeper in the zone here is Shakopee. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, number 23. 
<laughs> we got a face full of that one. It's 23 for Shakopee. Just kind of steps into Wedward there and put Wedward back on her heels. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, there's a cover. Good. Nice stoppage of play there by Bronwell. 2.30 remaining to play here in the first period. Shots on goal. Sabres 7. Wildcats 2. We get that stop. We get a little change of personnel for Shakopee. We're going to get five sets of fresh legs out there. Egan's being outshot, but it really feels like a very even game. Really does. Really does. I just Egan just has not capitalized when they've been yeah. in the offensive zone tonight at all. Yep. Shakopee is doing a nice job of pushing to the outsides. Not allowing them to have the shot. And when we try to get a shot, it's, they would just want too perfect of a shot. Mm -hmm. And it can't get through traffic or whatever else may happen. Yep, just got to get it out. Just got to throw something at the net. Like to see that stretching the ice. Far side to near side. Barry's going to give chase there. Getting a little help from Berg. This one's going to come all the way over to Hootmaker. Quick shot by Hootmaker. Again, can't quite get through traffic. And just happy as shot me to chick this one back out. Murray's looking. Going to use the net here to her advantage. She's going to slingshot herself around that net. It's got a full head of steam. Back checking hard is number 12 from Shakopee. Not quite sure why the Shakopee <laughs> coach wants a penalty. I, because I think he our, was trying to call out his own, his yeah, own player. Was That's, say, that was his girl. That was some lovely sportsmanship. He <laughs> well, was calling out his own kiddo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I thought the same thing. I'm like, wrong bench. Yep, wrong <laughs> bench. Exactly right. <laughs> Oh my. Mm -hmm. Anderson chips this one forward. A little much on it. Oh, no. Nope. nope. It's not going to have enough on it here. Shockby regroups. Trying to hold it in as Egan. Can't quite do so. Anderson's going to pop that one all the way back. No, that was Hoopmaker. That's another shot. That should be. Mm -hmm. It's all the way back through to uh, number one, Liv Totsik. Anderson. He lost that one. He lost it. Lost it on a shoulder or helmet or something. That one drops back down. Shockby's happy to come back to the near side. Less than a minute left in the first period here. A lot of back and forth action. Granis gets it caught in her skates and she can't quite capitalize on that one. Shockby comes back. Oh, but wait. Gets caught up on the red line. Coming back here is Hoopmaker. Quick shot, but that goes off a skate. Girls are just falling <laughs> over all over the place. Yeah, they really are this game. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think we're going to have a little Shaco here for a check. Yep. Bootmaker's getting up kind of slowly, but getting up, that's good. Going off is number five for Shakopee here, and that is Morgan Berg, freshman defense. Going to sit for two. Bootmaker looks like she's doing well. She's going to take this face off. Ooh, just chipping this one up and out. Coming back here is Murray. She's got 20 seconds kind of to mess around with. She's looking. Gets it over to Barry. Barry gets this one forward to Hootmaker. Oh, she gets checked again. Shakopee does a really nice checking game. <laughs> it should play for the boys. That's right. <laughs> oh, and another. Oh, oh, this one they're not going to let him get away with. Have another. Yeah, right. Well, if you're not calling these, I'm going to take advantage of this. That's very true. So yeah. with 3.3 seconds... There's going to be a two-girl advantage here as, uh, what are they calling Anderson? Oh, really? I'm not quite sure how they call Anderson in that one, but the box is open. She's pleading her case like, yeah. what? I'm the one who got I pulled down. What's right. going on? It happened to me. What did I do? Embellishment? I don't know. I, I, I guess. I don't know. That's I, only in pro wrestling. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we don't like to second guess the reps necessarily, but I'm, just, I'm curious what this call is going to be. I think we're all a little curious. So, Hootmaker is talking to the referee. She's saying, What's the deal? Yeah. Coaches, too, right yep. back of there. Yep. She's going to now tell, say to the coaches what's going on. She's trying to plead her case. So, we got two minutes for hooking on Shakopee. Holding the oh, stick. Will she now? Okay. Wow. Well, we can't see that from here. That's a tough so, one. Yeah. That is a tough call to make. Yeah. So with that, with 3.3, we don't have an additional girl advantage. We have uh, still power play, five on four. We, sh we should get just enough here. 
for a drop of the puck. And then we should hear a horn sound. So a very interesting first period. Yeah. As uh, we got our one penalty, we only have three more. You know, <laughs> like, like I said, I called yeah, four. No, for you the did day. call four. That was your yeah. We got to, you got time. Yeah, a couple of extra penalties there on Shakopee. But uh, outside of that, Egan's being outshot eight to two. But it doesn't feel like an eight to two disadvantage at all. This has been pretty even thus far. Back and forth action here. Pretty evenly matched game by two evenly matched teams on paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's a fun game to watch here though because it's, it's kind of some wide open hockey. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a little break here though with Egan Civic and uh, you guys head to the fridge, do what you gotta do, but don't forget to come back here in about 15 minutes as we've got two more periods of action. 0-0 zero, zero tie at the Egan Civic. Come back and join us here in a few. And go Cats. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Egan Civic Arena. Joshua Alexander here with Patrick Isley. Coming back here for the second period, Egan's going to be up a girl here on power play as uh, number five for Shakopee has about a minute 32 left here in her penalty. We're going to see what uh, Egan can do for offense. And... Uh, it, it's been so back and forth, Patrick. Mm -hmm. So evenly matched on both sides. I am really eager to see who scores first and then what happens. Yeah, that that that'll be you the know. thing. How they how what's the response? Yep, exactly. So, Coach Patachik is going to send out her power play unit. For those of you at home here, we've got Shakopee on the uh, headed from the right to the left hand side tilt of your screen and. Egan's headed from the left to the right side tilt of your screen. We've got Barry out there with Hootmaker, Robbins, Berg, and Murray. We talked earlier in this season that Murray uh, got the captain C, and I don't mean captain C, I mean captain <laughs> letter C mm -hmm. on her chest. Um, earlier in the season, nice to see as the uh, Senior Captain Anderson will be graduating, and uh, Murray's really stepped up her game. Um, we're not privy to kind of how that happened, or was there a vote, or was it coaches, but I think well-deserved. Oh, her I would her say game so. has really Absolutely. stepped up. She's done a nice job, plays a clean game, and uh, has just been a good leader uh, back there in the blue line for her team. Shakopee clears this one all the way down, taking some time off of that penalty. Berg gets this one all the way over to, to Murray. Murray's going to clean this one over to Barry. Robbins tries to step up and help it out. Shakopee's adding some pressure and trying to keep it in the zone. Again, number three for Shakopee. That's uh, Allison Parker, senior captain there. Taking some valuable time off. 25 seconds still in that penalty to Shakopee. Again, tying up here in the corner, eating up some more valuable time. Hoopmaker's looking. She's looking. Trying to cycle in the corner on the near side. Gives this one up to Robbins. Robin banks this one off. Really not able to set up a shot. And that's what Hoopmaker's just trying to do is set up a shot. Oh. Can't quite get it there. Sabres at full strength. Back to five on five action. Nice little curl around there by Murray to hold the blue line. Shockaby wants to rim this one all the way around. Berg's looking, oh, nice clear there over to Murray. Quick shot, but that's wide to the near side. Again, playing back to Murray. She's able to hold the blue line. Coming away with that one is, is Robbins. Gets that one over to Hayden Olsen. Hayden Olsen stepping up to center tonight and stepping away from defensive responsibilities. But I think Coach Patachik is just trying to mix some things up here to see what sticks as she's uh, planning for playoffs. Oh, good centering pass into the slot. That gets cleared out. Another high. Oh. And that one gets cleared out to the far side. Nice pinch by Berg, keeping that puck low into the zone. Shockby just wants this one out. I think they've got the wrong personnel out there yeah. as uh, they're going to have a wave of black jerseys coming on and off the ice here as Hayden Olsen hits her stride. But she's got some time and space, and Head Girl passes this one up to Granis. And this one's going to, I think that hit the ref there. Helps out Egan. Wedward puts this one in. Berg's going to give chase. Blue line held just off of the goalie for Shakopee. 
Eighth grade goalie, Liv Tazik. And I apologize if I'm getting the name wrong, but I've got a double consonant on this one. So I'm, I'm sorry for families if I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> nice little paddle save there by Bronwell. I think this one might have touched somebody on the Shakopee like bench there, and we're going to get this one coming back. Coincidental minor penalties expire, so we get both uh, Shakopee and uh, Anderson here for Egan out. Egan's, Anderson's just going to take the ice. Coach Patachik still trying to figure out who she wants out there. Berg's out there with Robbins and Barry. Back, back on defense, you've got Hoopmaker and Anderson. This puck just barely gets into the Shockby zone. Anderson's looking. Oh, get your Take pocket picked. No bueno. Nice Five glove play. save by Bronwell. That was no good. Yeah, no, that was just point blank from a few feet, from just a few feet in front of uh, Addy there. Nice save though. That was a nice save. She was stone cold right there. Yeah, Stood her ground, didn't commit. Yep. Glove out, boom. Mm -hmm. All leather. No, oh, it was all leather. <laughs> nice play with that Chocopee player to pick uh, Lillian Anderson's pocket and a nice little pass over to the open player. So good, smart play. Number 19 out there, Allison Schwark won that uh, face off there. Back to the defense. Nice to see Schwark out there. Schwark, it's sighting. good. I was about the I stole it. Thanks. Yeah. I, was, I couldn't get it out. I that, don't interrupt you. That's your line. I yeah, shouldn't I steal it. Ten times. Say it ten times fast. Here we go. Lions number 21 is taking this one in the zone. She's able to get a Ooh. shot off, and that's just covered up. But Schwark was right there to see if there's a rebound. Like to see the third line out there. Love it. Yep. Love that Coach Patachik, she's giving a little coaching. Get right in there. She's giving them minutes. She's got some trust out there. A lot of underclassmen. We've got Schwark, 19. Pogachnik, 23 underclassmen. Lions, 21 underclassmen. Well, you're Number gonna 25 as well. Mackenzie Danich out there. Nice to see. The only upperclassman on the ice is Lily Anderson. Number seven, defense. Everybody else is either in... 8th, ninth, or 10th grade. Wow. That's <laughs> that not anything fantastic. like years uh, gone no. past, but I love it. No, that's fantastic. Yep. Anderson working this one up, dumps the puck in. Wisely held up there by number one, Shakabi goalie, Liv Tatsik. 8th grader, two shutouts on the season. 12-24 left to play here in the second period. Hayden Olsen's going to step in here. Wedward. They're all kind of battling here on the near side. Shockaby's going to play this one all the way around to the far side. Change directions on this one. Trying to keep it in. Can't quite do so. Olsen's there to help. Again, a little back check by Olsen helping out the defense. I do love it when players come back from defense to go play offense because they back check like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate that. An offensive defensive player. I'm sure a goalie loves to see and that. And a defensive offensive player. Yeah. Well, she uh, used to be in back there, so I mean, if she can play a strong two-way game as a center, that's, that's you know, you're going to get more ice time, more opportunity. And again, your goalie's got to love the, the commitment there to come back. Face off. To the right of Bronwell. This gets picked up by Hoopmaker. Hoopmaker's kind of gone back to defense here the last couple of games. Stepping away from the offensive role. Olsen's going to give a little bit of chase there. Shockby's trying to regroup in their own zone. Coming out there, but that's picked off by Wedward. Wedward pokes this one forward and giving chase is Granis. Granis gets ridden off the puck, and this one's going to be coming out. But Hoopmaker puts a nice. backhand with some force and puts that one back into the near side corner. Shockby, D to D pass behind the net, up and touches the netting. 
as well have a stoppage of play with 11-11 remaining here in the second period. Patrick, I want to give a little shout out here to uh, the athletic and activities director for Egan High School. Um, Sandra Setter Larson does such a nice job here. Uh -huh. She's always here, first of all. Right. Um, we're here. She's here. She goes to all these events. Um, and again, being in education, not every activities athletic director goes to every event. It's just it's hard to cover. Uh -huh. But my goodness, she goes to every event, every girls hockey game. She's so positive. And, and really kind of sets that expectation for our code of cats and, yep. and really kind of gets these girls in the mindset of this is the right way to play the game, this is the right way that we do sportsmanship. Yep. Um, this is how we so present ourselves as a community in the stands, that kind of exactly, a thing. Exactly, exactly. I think there's exactly. been a, a, lot of, a lot of work done there. And like you mentioned, Joshua, I've, and I've said this before, I've seen her on Friday nights at 8 o'clock in Shakopee at an adaptive uh, sporting event. So that's cool. I, you don't always see that. And just to see her... Uh, Supporting at you know athletes of all skill levels at any time of the day or night is kind of cool to see. I, we always appreciate seeing her. Yep, and I and I've known uh, known Sandra for a long time, uh, not only as a parent but as a colleague, and I have only known her as such a positive Absolutely. person. Yep, positive with her personal demeanor, positive in how she works with families and kids. I I am so proud as an Egan resident and having had my kids go through Egan High School, that she is part of those kids' lives every single day. We're fortunate to have someone with such a positive influence, absolutely, and, yep. and knows the kids, knows their names, says hi to them by their first names. That's, uh, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you get that everywhere. I think, nope. we're, I think we're incredibly uh, incredibly fortunate. We are incredibly fortunate. Had a penalty there on that play. Yes, we did. We're, we're going to have uh, number 16, uh, Murray, head off here for two minutes, and... I don't quite know why she went off here. We'll get the public announcer here. Um, I didn't quite see it. May have been, I didn't either. May have been some body checking. I don't know. They got some Beastie Boys uh, talking about fighting, so I don't know. Might have something to do with it. Appreciate the Beastie Boys you got in between play. Body checking. There it is. It was a guess. The Ironic. Song, the song. Thanks, Beastie Boys. Ironic song. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, they're trying the to jam this one in here. Boys. The referee's right there, calling it off. Bronwell holds her area. She's like, nope. Still a 0-0 tie here. Yes, Egan's trying to get the right personnel out there for uh, penalty kill. The way this game's going, the first goal is going to be huge. Absolutely. That'll be the momentum shift. It's called that break in the seal, yep. so to speak, yep, on break, the, yeah, on and the then net. Just, and again, like I think you said earlier, Joshua, just seeing how the other team responds, if it gives them a little bit a little bit more urgency, depending on who scores first. Egan's battling hard here tonight. Again, not taking anything for granted. Doing a nice job. Bronwell's doing a nice job. Got it there. Very few, if any... Yeah, very few, if any, rebounds is Bronwell putting out there. Nope. As uh, she's just gobbling up everything. Yep. I think we're going to have another penalty here. I, I think Barry so. gave a push to somebody, and uh, that's a tough one here going down. Yeah, that's a tough one. What, do we get a charge there? I'm not sure. Uh, we'll hear. I'm not quite sure what the, uh, what the call was here. Something right out in front of the net. But we've okay. got uh, five on three. Those are tough ones here, five on three. Yeah. P announcer's not helping me at all with the song choice with uh, what this penalty might be. Not this time. We'll have, have a chat afterwards. <laughs> oh, roughing. All righty. All right. Big kill. Yep, this will be a big kill. The idea is to get that puck out of your zone with gusto mm -hmm. and into the deepest end of the opposing end as possible. It's going to be hard to get a change with it being the long change period and all, too. So they, these girls might be out here the entire time. Oh, Ooh, that back door is open. Playing a little triangle here. Nice little stick there by Barry. Couldn't quite get enough on it, though. Shock be trying to set up. Oh, come on, oh, Barry. Oh, 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 nice. And reach. just gets out of the zone. Shock be's going to have to regroup. Yeah. That nice stick little was extra just push. the right length. Shock be comes in. Nice little drag there by Hoopmaker. 
Couldn't quite find it though to be able to clear that one out. Shakopee's looking. Playing a little pass there at the blue line. Oh, nice quick shot. And this one gets put out. There's the uh. gusto <laughs> all the way down to the far nether regions in the Shakopee end. Senior captain Allison Parker regroups. Getting this one set back up. Hayden Olsen comes out there for, for Egan as Robbins did her job. And again, getting this puck all the way back down. One girl short here. Murray goes off. Barry comes back, excuse me, Robbins comes back on. Five on four. Power play for Shakopee. Shakopee setting up, taking their time, taking their time. Nice block there by Robbins. N another another nice block there by Anderson. Oh, oh my! Just picked that corner. Wow, 23. That's Callie Peterson. She is one of their leading scorers as well. Back yep. there on the blue line. Junior defense, puts one in there, breaks the seal. It was a nice goal. Yeah, it was a nice goal. I believe that's her fourth of the year. It's pretty nice back on defense. Nice, hard, low shot. Hit, picked that corner. Not a lot you can do. But you, can only, you can only put, uh, we've said this all season long too, you can only put so much pressure on your goalie with, with penalties. So, again, we'll see, uh, we'll see what the response is here. Schwark is out there with Danich and Lyons. Pogacnik and Anderson. Shock be found another gear all of a sudden as they yeah. uh, got a little momentum of emotion. It really looked like there was a little bit more jump to their game all of a sudden. Wanted to dump this one back into the near side corner. Scoring for the Sabres, number 23, Callie Peterson. Power play goal there. Shakopee Sabres up 1-0 in the second period. Shots on goal for Shakopee have jumped up to 13. Egan still with a little bit of anemic there with four. I, I feel like they've had more, but they're just not getting through. No, they're not. Shakopee's doing a nice job of clogging the lanes. They just, yeah, need to start throwing anything and everything at the net, I think, at this point. Murray. Far side corner, plays with some back around for Pogacnik. Shockby's happy just to keep this one playing very low in the zone. Behind Bronwell's net, Olsen rides off. Shockby skater, just trying to get it out. Lions can't quite get it out. Olsen's looking again. Head girl pass up, and Shockby picks this one off. Again, that's uh, Allison Parker, their senior captain, just in the right place at the right time. Murray's looking. A lot of buzz there by Shakopee. This this should have actually touched the Shakopee. It did before that defense, but, yeah. but they're going to call icing, and we'll bring this one back. Five thirty-one left to play here in the second period. Trying to get some personnel matchups here. Egan's playing a little shell shocked right now. weren't able to clear it out of their zone. Had to dump it down and regroup for the icing. Olsen's coming around, she's looking. Tries to get this one over, she gets it to Wedward. Wedward's got a back checker on her here. She's trying to take on five black sweaters on herself, she can't do it. Grannis is gonna give her a little help. She gets tied up. Wedward losing edge, nice Ooh. shot by Bootmaker. That was just skittering all over the ice. Mm -hmm. But the... Uh, Goaltender there for Shakopee just envelops that puck in her glove and no rebound. Nice low shot, had a chance for a bit of a screen there and yeah, picked it up nicely. Robbins is gonna step in here for Egan, take the face off. Nice win back there to Murray. Murray has to dump this one in. She was receiving some pressure from Shakopee playing high, covering those points. Nice job by Hoopmaker keeping it in. Quick look if Murray can keep this one in. She does. 
Reset. Oh, oh that's a nice giveaway. Here we go, Hoopmaker. Quick shot. Pad save kicked out to the side. And again, we're getting some shots through now. Egan's pressuring. Go. Oh, my goodness. Berg's pocket was picked. I think they stole her purse, her wallet, <laughs> her car keys. There is a penalty that we've got on the back referee. Yeah, my, my guess is out front. I think there was a cross check. Yep, cross check out front. When, when a girl's head snaps back like that and she hits the ice, you know, it's a cross check. Yeah. Or she's just rocking out to Metallica. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not sure. Maybe. Pretty sure on the cross check. I, I'm, I'm going to lean cross check. So with that, Egan goes on the power play with 422 remainder here in the second period. Well, great opportunity. They've got three quick shots in the last couple of minutes. Absolutely. Showing a little more pressure, keeping it in the zone. I would just start throwing anything and everything at the net if they can. Hoopmaker steps in to take this face off. Robbins is going to give chase here. They've got to get something going here on this power play just to set themselves up. Anderson's looking. Wrapped all the way around her. Is that Allison Parker again? That's we said captain, earlier, yeah. all over the ice tonight, doing a nice job for Shakopee. And just, again, just playing so high. You're on penalty kill, and you're playing so oh, high. Oh, oh, oh my oh. gracious, there it is! We have tied it up here at the Egan Civic Arena. That's exactly what you need to do, just start shooting at the net. There was a nice little rebound there, player in the right place. Who was that? Lily Anderson, Anderson nice. right there for a greasy goal. Yep. Rebound was given and taken away. <laughs> yes, it was. It was deposited. Nice job there by Egan. Mm -hmm. Answering that goal, so we're back to a tie game, one to one. I'd like to see who uh, we have some assists going to here as that started with just a good shot that wasn't handled and yep. rebounds given out. And just like that, it's a one-to-one -one tie. I mean, that was just down low. That just dropped right in front of the goalie. And if Absolutely. she's not right there crashing the net, that doesn't happen. So. Looks like they've... Nice job. Special teams playing a big part here tonight for Egan as uh, Hootmaker and Murray got the uh, assist there as Lily Anderson was in the right place, right time, and really just put that one home. That was the response you wanted to see. I think earlier in the season we may have seen, at we've seen before, uh, Egan give up a goal and then they come back and unfortunately have a penalty, so they stayed out of the box and said shock if he was in there, and look what they did. They tied it up. Learning some lessons, I think, throughout the year. You can bring in this one around, looking to uh, get out of the zone. Shockaby dumps this one back in. Regrouping, deep in the zone is Murray. Head girl passes this into Edward. She can't handle that one. And it goes back into the deep in the near side. Icing's waved off as this gets just a little bit of stick from number 10 there for Shakopee. A little bit of takedown there for Wedward. I think she just lost an edge there. Yeah. They're grappling for play. Murray, she gets ridden off on the near side. Granis is there trying to keep it in, and she does. Again, Shockby comes away with this one. Shockby dumps in. They're going to get a full set. All five skaters coming in. There's time and space here for Egan. They're looking at it, but that does just get picked off. <laughs> Robin's still able to come away with it. Oh my goodness, oh, but it's coming go. back the other way. Nice poke check at the last minute there. Yeah. Love that little, little back check there, a little poke. And then we got Granis coming back. She gets ridden off the puck. Suddenly a lot of end, end action. Very much so. Here's Robin. She gets robbed of the puck there. As Shockaby rims this one back around. Bogachnik backhand. Robbins has it. Tries to center. Nobody home. Comes to the near side. Berg getting a little help there from Barry. Oh. Dumps this one in. Got another penalty. A lot here. of physical play here. Yep. We got a Bronwell skating over, but we're just not able to get a girl out there soon enough 
as uh, another special teams here a trip as we're going to have uh, Shakopee going off here. Minute 24 left to play in the second period. Number 36 for Shakopee. That's Carmen Benedict. Start of the game tonight, seventh grader. Ooh, wow, good for her. Yeah, don't hear a hear that number often. Not since Natalie Darwitz do I hear a seventh grader right. starting for varsity. That's good for her. So we got some special teams going here. Again, Shakopee plays very high up on those on the points for the blue line. Tying it up. Ref's right there to make sure it's staying clean. Puck comes back to Murray. And Shakopee's going to come with. It's two on two hockey. Ooh, a little tip there. And Bronwell's going to cover this one up. I think we're going to have a penalty, oh. though. Oh. Interference. Ooh. Oh, my. Well, I think we've hit our quota for penalties for I, this I, evening. Yeah, I feel good about the number we're at. Sure. We, we, we so might hit triples here before the end of the game, <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> it's well, a school night. We'll be here a while. No, no. I think we already have hit triples, <laughs> yeah. Patrick, if I, if I was doing oh, my I'm math Oh, right. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, yep. the neighbor, we're definitely in the neighborhood. Definitely, yeah. We don't need another game to hit triples. No. Four on four action here. 43 seconds left. Counting down in the second period. Shakopee's happy to dump this one in and give chase. Murray's there. Oh, she gets taken out. Nice glove yeah, saved by Bronwell. Saw that right in. That was good. As we said all season long, if she's got an open view like that, she's going to gobble those up. That's not a problem for her at all. Get a little change of personnel here for Egan. Some fresh legs. Olsen, number 11, is going to take this face off here. Nice face off win for her. Hoopmaker just pops this one out, a little bank off the near side boards. Stepping up there is Berg, dumps it in. Again, I think Shockby just wants to eat it up. We might have a shot off of this one. Quick shot. Oh, just Ooh, and that one just goes wide. No Egan girl there. But again, Shockby just happy to eat this one if they can. And they're going to. And time expires. Buzzer sounds here at the Egan Civic Arena. Wow, a lot of action here in the second period. A lot of penalties in the second period. Yep. A couple of goals here in the second period. That's kind of a place to be with second period. I think so. Wow, yeah. I'm glad hopefully I was can, here. Yeah, hope we can uh, duplicate that in the third. Maybe uh, see if we can't squeak out something here. But yeah, evened up. Uh, Egan suddenly jumped up with their shots on goal, which was good to see. I think it's all going to come down to which team can stay out of the box this third period. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're getting ready for Chuckapuck here, so we're going to take just a break. But before we do that, when we come back in about 15 minutes, we're going to come back to four-on-four -four action as uh, we're also a tie game, 1-1 here at the Egan Civic. Come on back and join us in about 15 minutes. We've got a great game and a third period remaining to play. Join us then. Go Cats. Welcome back to the Egan Civic Arena. Joshua Alexander here with Patrick Isley. And uh, we are ready for period three. We're missing a team, however, so we have to kind of wait for the Egan girls. I'm not quite sure uh, what the holdup is. Probably talking game plan here for some four on four skate. But we've got 17 minutes here, and there's a lot to be done in 17 minutes here, Patrick. And we had a lot in that second period, that's for sure. Things kind of opened up. We got a couple goals, got some shots, got plenty of penalties. Kind of curious to see what we're in store for for this third period. Absolutely. So with that, Shockby's ready to go. Our referees are more than ready to go. They're yep. like, let's go. Yep, We've been along. waiting for you here. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Lily Anderson in the box here. She's got about a minute nine left uh, in her penalty. And uh, number 36 for Shakopee, that's Carmen Benedict, a seventh grader. Uh, she's got about 36 seconds. So um, with that, four on four action, even play. Fall plays out here. Um, Benedict will step out, will be on uh, shorthanded here in uh, Shakopee power play for about 30 seconds. And then back to five on five action. 
Out there for Egan. Robbins is going to take this face off. She's out there with Murray and Hootmaker and Barry. Referees are kind of checking out the, the ice here a little bit. A little wet still, given the old <laughs> try here. But sometimes we, we respectfully plays. call this the Lake Egan. Lake Egan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for many years when this became geothermal um, <laughs> and they kind of redid the ice, we had large puddles. I think it's and always we, usually down this other end. I, I can see. Say, usually it's in the uh, the visitor side. Yeah, it's a little swampy over this way. I can oh, see yeah. they're checking it out over here. Yep. Taking Lake that, Egan. Taking that puck for a swim. Mark Vaughn never liked us to say that. He is no? the rink manager here. <laughs> and uh, great guy. He does yep. a great job with the rink. Never really liked saying Lake Egan. Didn't take to it, did he? Nope. Yeah. Never really took to it. Mm -hmm. So Barry's got a full head of steam here as we start the third period. She wraps this one around. coming around to the near side. Holding that one is Hootmaker. Big check there. Hootmaker loses a stick. Oh, that was Murray loses a stick. Shockby backhands this one in. There's Barry. A lot of talk out there in the ice. You can hear these girls calling for it. Shockby moves D to D. Quick shot. Nice break up there by Robbins. Keeping that shot from getting all the way through. Shakopee now at full strength. We've got about 28 seconds left for the Anderson penalty. And Hootmaker's happy to just dump this one down. That one's picked off there at the red line by Shakopee. They're going to regroup and bring this one in the zone. Murray's there to make sure that gives a little buzz there. 11 seconds. Shakopee's trying to set it up. Trying to look for that shot. Box formation here. Back to five on five, no shot taken. Oh my, that one just got out and kind of kicked around. Runwell kind of got held up. Come back the other way is Hoopmaker. She is on her own. Anderson's there as a trailer. Nice hard stop cycling around. Anderson's there behind the net. Almost like they set that play up, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, right oh! there. Score! Oh! Oh my gracious, did you see that, Patrick? It was I like a set play. It looked like a set play, it sure did. Wow. That back door was wide open there, nice. Number 10, Lauren Wedward, fantastic. Puts the greasy goal away, and your Wildcats are up two to one in the third period. Beautiful way to start off this period. Nice. When I say that was a set play, Patrick, and we don't have replay for you, I'm gonna do it in my mind right yes. now for everybody at home. Yep. That was dumped in. Anderson was deep behind the net. She picks it up, puts it out in front. Shot goes, rebound. Wedward was there. Yeah, just puts trailing it in. behind that play. Well, as we were talking before the game, you know, going to UND games, we could have got out the uh, overhead projector and drawn we it up. We could have drawn it we up should that have. way. We should, we should have, have drawn have. it up that way. And there, I know there are a few people that know what we're talking about at home. I would, I would like. <laughs> we'll let the PA announcer announce here. Got Wedward from Granis and Anderson. Wildcats take the lead here, two to one. 14-28 here to play here in the third period. When things slow down, we're going back to the overhead analogy. <laughs> Shockabee's kind of picking up their game here a little bit. Trying to just bank this one out. Can't quite get it all the way out. Oop, and that one goes up and over and out. And we're going to stop at your play here in a face-off in the Egan zone. So for those of us who were in attendance at the old Ralph Engelstead Arena up in Grand Forks, North Dakota, to watch the old Sioux, now the Fighting Hawks, yep. they had an overhead projector that they would use to draw up the plays. Mm -hmm. And it was literally an overhead projector and a screen that they would use in the ring. Oh, it was wonderful. Pre-smart uh, pre, uh, board days. Pre-smart board. Oh, those were the days. Yeah, well, those were the days. Bench the seating old for, for D1 hockey. Mm -hmm. Good times. Yep. Good way to spend a, a Friday night. I would say. Yep. Back to action here at the Civic Arena. 
Shaq be being able to skate this one out, and they do. Dump this one in. Icing's waved off. Anderson's gonna chip this one around. Barry's there, bounces off her and gets out of the zone. Shockby head girl passes this one and they're gonna dump and they're gonna get four girl change. Anderson sees some time and space, can't get this one out as Robbins is gonna come the other direction. Tries to bank off the boards here, Granis tries to bank off. Shockby, oh my goodness! Ooh. That one just, Bronwell just kicked that one out. My heart did a little skip there, Patrick, mm -hmm. I don't mind telling you. That back door was wide open. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the Shock P player had a nice chance for a backhand there, just could not get that shot off. Absolutely. Again, both teams kind of stepping up the play, sense of urgency on both here. Anderson, with conviction, chips that puck out. Now it's going to come all the way down. Well, we've got an icing. We'll bring this one back here. Good idea. Like you always zone. say, Joshua, sometimes just going to relieve that pressure. Crank it down a little bit, get some fresh legs out there because Shakopee was coming. I do have to say, Patrick, um, we don't talk about the refs much because you're not supposed to. They're supposed to blend into the game a little bit. Yep. But I have to say, the, the crew here tonight's done a very nice job mm -hmm. keeping the game safe, keeping the game in check, calling it even on both sides. Yep. Um, so, really, I, it's been a good game. You know, I know the parents always put the arm up and they're looking for something. Well, but it's, yeah. it's been a very well officiated game tonight. Yep. Letting the girls play, but when uh, we run into some issue, they are calling the penalties. Yep. And again, that safety of the game um, really starts with them. Yeah, you want to let the players know what they can and cannot do right away, and just they're not letting anything go. Um, frankly, I think the stands have gotten a bit quieter this year, frankly. I think, I think it's so. been kind of nice not seeing the automatic arm go up yep. anytime it's within a foot of the blue line. <laughs> um, you know, but. Uh, no, I think they call it a good game. And again, we have the benefit of the doubt most of the time of replays. They do not. Exactly. I may joke all the time about the boys in Toronto to look at the replay. There's no boys in Toronto looking at the replay. That's the NHL. That's Joe in the truck. But that is Joe. Really Joe's no, over here shaking his head. He has I'm no looking. bearing on the game. No, though, he has no truck, power. So, yeah. None whatsoever. <laughs> but again, we've had some great <laughs> crews here tonight. Um, and we've had great crews really all season officiating. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you to our officials who... You know, they're not getting paid millions of dollars, no. ladies and gentlemen, to, to referee. Ooh, and nice they do a great job. Right there. Oh, oh, that. Yeah, they're going to call that every day. Flying suplex to little, the little high. high slot. Ouch. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a thankless job down there, and everything's happening very fast. So, yep, absolutely. And as we call it, we're going to get an interference call here yeah, we on are. Shakopee. Power play opportunity here for your Egan Wildcats with 11.34 left to play. Shot starting to even, even out here. Egan at 12, and shot could be up to 18. Nice hold there by Murray. Anderson's coming around here. She's going to take a quick shot. Glove save. Ooh, wow. Nice shot, though. That was a beautiful shot. She was looking at that corner. Yep. But Liv, number one for uh, Shakopee just grabs that one. And that was a really nice save. Mm -hmm. Anderson's going to step in and take, no, excuse me, Hoopmaker takes this one. Murray, she's getting hassled there at the blue line, but still able to get a shot off. This one hits the back of the netting. A little battle going on behind the net here. Oh, still, oh, oh net goes off. off. Good battle. Referee's right there to make sure things are good for everybody. Mm -hmm. About 26 seconds have been taken off of that penalty. Bootmaker's going to step in and take it again here. A little bit too much there, but she did win that one. Getting this one over to Barry. Barry's not able to get this one in. Murray's there. She's going to dump this one again. It's getting hung up on that blue line. Sticky blue line right there. <laughs> this one comes back. Murray's got a look. Setting up. Wide pass. Referee waves off. Icing. Battling for it behind the net. Egan's looking. Barry's there. She's cycling around. And Robbins just dumps this one in. Again, Egan trying to get something going here. Trying to set something up and coming back the other direction. 
Shot could be short-handed. Looking, looking. That one goes off of Hayden Olsen. And coming back the other way, we've got Anderson. She's looking. Oh, right out front. Right through the goal crease. Hoopmaker not quite in a position to be able to get a stick on it. Again, cycling back around. Wedward and this one just gets dumped all the way back around. Murray, deep in her own zone. 14 seconds here to play with with the girl advantage. Loses the puck here, and this one gets dumped back around again. Bogachnik is there, gets caught in her skate. Two seconds, one second. Wedward's going to dump this one in firmly, and we go back to five on five action. Egan not able to capitalize on special teams there for the power play. Shockby did a nice job of dumping that puck down, taking off a lot of time on that, on that penalty kill. Shockby playing with the puck behind their own net. Egan's right there. It's in the skates. They're going to bring this back around to near side. Nice pinch in by Murray. Mm -hmm. Keeps that puck in nice. deep in the zone. Well played by Murray. Good aggressive play. Takes a lot of uh, effort and timing to really pinch that puck well and hold the blue line and keeping an offensive attack in. Egan off on a change. Robin adding a little bit of pressure here. Shockby's able to get a little time and space. Nice right off the puck by Barry. Yeah, nice and nice and clean right off there. Very much so. Took the hands, took the body, come back the other direction. This will be Berg. She's going to ask for a little help there from Barry. Barry can't quite get a handle on it as two Shockaby Sabres converge upon her. And Shockaby comes back the other direction. Anderson's got a little time and space. She's nice little move there. Jacopi regrouping, coming through neutral. Skating, and that should be offside. Uh, they didn't call it, but yeah. we're going to let that one go. Off a of shin guard. 7.55 left to play here in the third period. Egan up by one. Wanting to battle for another. Real icing here as Wedward is giving chase. We'll bring this one all the way back down into the Egan zone. Eighties remix playing at the uh, C Civic Arena in between here. I do appreciate the eclectic <laughs> mix here sometimes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The songs I don't normally hear unless I'm at the Egan right. Civic Arena. That's fun. You never know what you're gonna hear. That's true. Coming back the other way here. Wedward's gonna dump this one in. She's gonna go off on a change, giving chase is Granis. Granis just trying to keep that one in on those far side boards. Tough area to play by the Zamboni door. And Shakopee's going to dump this one all the way down. We'll get an icing and bring it back into the Shakopee zone. So, Patrick, next game here for your Egan Wildcats in the last game of the season, I think, for them. I think it's the last game of the season as yeah. they head into um, tournament time. Uh, they play Apple Valley on February 3rd. So if you get a chance, you can head over to Hayes Arena in Apple Valley, um, and uh, watch a good game. Apple Valley's a good team, give yep. them a good matchup, yep. and uh, hopefully these girls can steady themselves here. Yep. Wasn't it Moran that scored her 250th career point here? I'm curious as, what, as, what, as to what she's up to at this point in the season. Yeah, that would be, be, be an interesting one to find yeah, out. And she's a junior, I believe. Correct, correct. So. Yep, Moran, um, a uh, fantastic player for Apple Valley, scored her 250th point against Egan here about a month back. Uh, got a chance to talk to her mom and uh, very appreciative of being able to get that one on ETV because the, the camera work alone that ETV yeah. provides, pretty amazing. Oh! Wowzers. Hmm. So, but with that, um, very appreciative that she was able to kind of get that 250th point here. Camera work was amazing, got yep. a lot of good replays. Uh, but we go back to their home rink for Apple Valley and. We're going to see what happens here. 6.46 left to play in the third period. Draw goes back to the blue line here. Little chip around. Ooh, Ooh redirection. That's dangerous. Yep, that went right from the far side to near side quickly. And coming out with it here is Egan. Egan. 
Shakopee still just charging. Not giving up at all. No. Oh. Nice. Oh, but good got defense. Nice. Tied up that stick. Very much so. I Honestly, I, that those are saviors mm -hmm. as uh, those backdoor shots, the backdoor, just nobody on them. And those are saviors for a goalie. Oh, 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 no. Nope. Oh, my goodness. Just like I, I'm prophetic tonight. Yep. Needing a savior for a goalie. Backdoor shot. Yep. We're tied it at two. There. Big rebound. Big rebound. Absolutely. We have a game on our hands, yeah, Patrick Geisley. Now, credit to Shakopee. Very Coming much. right down. They, they just they kind of turned something on after that second Egan goal. So credit to them for that. So when we started this game, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you at home, we talked about how evenly matched on paper yep. both of these teams are. We couldn't have asked for a better game at 5.55 left to play in the third period. It's a 2-2 tie. We've got 20 shots on the, on the board here for Shakopee, 15 shots for Egan's. It's been back and forth all night. Penalties are about even all night. We've had a, just a, a fantastic game to yeah, watch all nice night. Nice evenly played back game. Back and forth. Marie's taking this one. She's going to curl around here. She gets taken down or loses an edge. No call. Ooh, that's, that's a definite check. Yeah. We're going to get a call on that one. That was definitely a hip check. Yeah. That arm went right up right away. So we got some special teams options here for Egan as uh, number, I think it's 22 here for Shakopee is going to go off. That's uh, Elizabeth Canny. Yeah, again, they, they made that call easy for the ref. Absolutely. That yeah, was right in front of us. And I got to say, I think Shakopee's outpacing Egan pretty good with the penalties tonight. So let's see what the special teams can do for Egan as uh, Hoopmaker takes that one. Anderson's looking. She's going to dump this one back around for Hoopmaker. Hoopmaker's looking for somebody to get a good shot off. Ooh, ooh just up and over. Shot could be taking the body here, tying it up. Girls falling all over the place here. Again, Murray steps in for the pinch of the zone. Able to keep that puck in. Hoopmaker's looking. Anderson, she's looking. She gets that out to Murray. Again, shot could be very aggressive on the penalty kill. Not giving Egan any time or space. And they're going to come away with this one here. Goodness. Wow. Yep. Wow is right, Patrick. That just, wow. Fluttered up and in. That's a backbreaker with uh, a shorty there. Good news is, you can sell as a buck eight on their That's power play true. to get this back. But That's that, very that true. hurts. Yep. That one that one hurts as shock me. I'll give shock me their due on that one. Yeah. Carried the puck in, played a very aggressive. Um, offensive play, shorthanded. 23 for Shockaby comes in on the blue line, just takes the shot up and over Bronwell. Yep. And we've got three to two here in the Sabres direction with 4.22 left to play in the third period. Egan still has 54 seconds. And, <laughs> I'm, la I'm laughing here, ladies and gentlemen. They call it Callie Peterson. That's her second goal here tonight. And she came in being their third um, leader for points on the team. Really nice game back there on defense. Very much so. Very much so. Pogacnik, she's going to carry this one around. Puts on the brakes. Going to give this one back around to Wedward. And again, the aggressive forecheck there by Shakopee. Coming away with this Wedward. And that's number three, Allison Parker. It's her senior captain. She's been all over the ice tonight, just being aggressive. Four check, back check. Back to five on five action here. It's an offside. Yep. That one's. 
shot. Kavis going to carry this one in. Quick shot. Nice save by Bronwell. Cut off that angle well. Yeah, I. the one thing, as I, as I look back to that last power play that Egan had, Shockley plays such an aggressive yeah. penalty kill. I was going to say, it reminded me a little bit of visitation. Yes. That visitation game a week or so ago, a yep. week or two ago. They were extremely aggressive on the kill, and that really paid dividends right there for Shakopee. Yep, and and for us to see that, they play so high to yep. the blue line, yep. they don't give you any space to be able to move, and that's hard for teams who aren't used to being able to have somebody play that box so very high mm -hmm. and so very aggressive, and that's exactly what Shakopee did. opportunities like that. Oh, let's see what we got here. Well, hoping she had not hit her head there. No, I think she went in slow. I think she went in slow it. enough. So yeah. I'm hoping she went in slow enough. Yeah, uh, the way she tried to get up there makes me think otherwise. Yep, me too. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't yep. like that. They, yeah, they need, I don't they like need that one bit. Let's there. get her under her arms there. Yep, there we go. Good call grabbing her there. Good idea. Yep. That's our captain, Hootmaker, yep. helping her off the ice. Yep. Yeah, yep. I don't like the look of that at no, all. Let's just hope she's okay and let's get her seeing a trainer. And Yep. That was number 18 for Egan. It's Greta Berg. We're back to five on five action here, 237. Quick shot, that gets blocked. It comes back hard into the Egan zone. It's taken by Murray. Head girl pass up to Barry. Barry puts this one around, but that gets picked off again by number three, Allison Parker. Barry over to Granis. Excuse me, that's Kron that's out there. Number 26 for Egan. Sarah Kron getting some time here. Shock be happy just to dump this one in. Eating up time. Nice rink wide here. But again, Shock be just happy to keep dumping her back down. Waves of those black jerseys mm -hmm. just keep coming. Gets kicked aside by Bronwell. Put back, and Bronwell wisely just gloves that one for a stoppage of play here. 132 left to play in the third period. Gotta believe they get this down to the Shock PM, they're gonna pull Bronwell, I believe. I, I would say that if we can get to, yes. It's got to be in the zone, though. Yep. I think, yeah, we're going to get a timeout here. We're going to have uh, teams kind of figure out what's going to happen, what they want to do. And, yep, definitely you're going to try to set up for when does Bronwell come off. Um, ideally, immediately you get that puck skated out mm -hmm. into the offensive zone here um, down in the shock at the end. You pull her as that's happening, getting that six skater out in tandem here as you just kind of push your way forward. Yep, hopefully that happens. Got to have the right personnel out there. Got to talk to the girls about who's in charge. And then you got to talk to them about, you're, you're pulling a 30 second shift. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you easily then, who's the next girl going in? Who's the next girl going in? Yep. Because you, you can't get pushed back being tired. Because Shaq could be, with being in their zone, they can substitute in and out rather easily. You got a long change here. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to be able to figure out two or three different pieces here with about a minute 32 remaining. Yep. A lot of teams will practice this. Not very much. You get, you get some practice time to be able to say, what do you do? Yep. Shorthanded play, but it's usually not who's your next personnel coming out, you know, how long you're staying out. Um, trying to short shift as best you can to get some fresh legs out there. Keep that push in the offensive zone. Really kind of just jam it in. Good shot, jam it yeah, in. Yeah, you don't, you don't want any guessing no. going into it at this point. Like I say, you probably worked on that. Say, Josh, this might be a good time to say, hey, another season working with you. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. This is our last game of the, of the season, as Patrick brings up. Um, it was great to you know be with you as well. You always make me sound so great providing all the data. Um, and again, I just enjoy having the conversation with you. Yeah, that's all we're doing. We're having a good time. And uh, 
Hope folks at home are enjoying this. If you're in state, out of state, wherever you're calling, you know, wherever you're watching from, hope you're just, uh, just enjoying some hockey. Yeah, we got great Egan fans who watch all around the country. We, we get a chance every now and then to have grandparents come up and say, hey, you know, I, I live up in northern Minnesota and I get to watch your games. Mm -hmm. And, uh-oh, hand pass. We'll stop there. I just, that, I, I don't know for you. I, that, I, I think I can speak for you. That makes my night when someone comes up and says that and they just yeah. kind of appreciate uh, just the quality of camera work with ETV, the production values, and even us. You know, I just... Uh, we're trying to call a fun game and, and keep it interesting for everybody. Had a good, have a good time uh, all the while. So we also we always appreciate the kind words. So for those of you at home, we had a hand pass, which brings it all the way down to the Shakopee zone, which then automatically allows Egan to be able to have an extra skater. They, they have pulled Bronwell. We are six on five. They've got to be aggressive here. Can't afford to just let those things happen. Just one right minute remaining. There. Again, Egan's got to be aggressive, got to get this puck back down. Got to tag up. Tag up. 44 seconds it. remaining here. Shockby has that one goal lead. Just want to get it to neutral. Six on five here. Girl advantage for Egan as Brownwell has been pulled. Quick shot, glove save. Again, that's exactly what you want to do. Quick shot and get in there for any opportunity for a rebound. That's how you scored one of your goals. Dropped right in front of the goalie and they weren't able to cover it in time. So, yeah, you want to put that pressure on her. 30.9 seconds here remaining. Kind of feel the tension here by Egan. Egan's not able to win the face. Oh, oh just off of Murray skate. Senior captain oh. for Shakopee puts that one in. Again, we've called number three Allison Parker's name many a time tonight, and she was she was there, and that's why she's wearing the C. Mm -hmm. Well, that pretty much seals the deal. I gotta believe. Um, we're like to have seen you know Egan's been kind of stuck on four wins the last couple two three years now, so they still have another shot at you know getting past that their next game. Um, you know, got to sort of feel, you do have to feel good though for the Shakopee community getting this win. I'm sure they could probably use that. Absolutely. But again, I thanking everybody who watches at home. We're really nothing if we don't have an audience here. Right. So all the aunts and uncles, the grandparents, the moms and dads who are on business trips who want to see their kids play. Yep. Um, it's just, we're so thankful for everybody who watches us on ETV. And uh, occasionally we get the feedback and, and the thanks in person. But again, we thank you for watching us, allowing us to be able to do this. It's a lot of fun. Yep. It's a lot of fun seeing these girls grow up, skills improve. Um, but again, keep cheering for these girls. Keep coming back. We've got a game here on Saturday uh, against Apple Valley. Um, and that's playoff but, time. And then, then again, it's playoff time after Another team, that. whoever they get in the first round, yep. they have to show up. Yep. So you never know what can happen. Yep. So with that, I just want to thank everybody. Thank ETV. We we'll thank our boosters, again, Egan High School, and everybody who supports our girls. Uh, Patrick, again, thank you, sir, for all that you do. And a uh, great season, I think. Yeah, fun time. It's always, it's always a fun time with you, Joshua. It's fun, it's fun to still be a part of hockey. There we go. So for Patrick Isley, I am Joshua Alexander saying goodbye and thank you so much on another great season. Have a great night, everybody. Don't forget, cheer for these girls here on Saturday. And as always, go Cats. Take care, everybody.